Hey, it's Sam here, and this is the QK65 V2 Classic. It's similar to the previous version, but it has a more minimalistic design without the LED strip and the screen. So, in the box, there will be a pack of accessories. They are nicely organized into these three layers of foam. There's the 2.4 GHz USB wireless dongle, a pack of screws for the keyboard, the silicone gaskets, extra clips and rubber feet, a magnetic badge of your choice, a spare ribbon cable, a braided and coiled type A to type C cable, a keycap puller, a metal switch puller, and a really fancy screwdriver with a removable bit. For the keyboard and its components, they come in the hard shell carrying case included. It's a pretty standard carrying case with straps to hold the keyboard and a top compartment to store some accessories. So, there will be a box of clip-in neo straps included, the plate of your choice, the PCB and I went with the Trimod flex card option. Because of this, I do get a PE sheet and PCB foam included. Speaking about the foam, there's also two more Poron case foam included to help with the typing sound. As for the case, I went with the retro white color and the brass option for the weight with the game badge and tag. Honestly, the spray coated finish is great, I just love the matte texture it has and it doesn't show any smudges and fingerprints. The case is CNC aluminium, so it is quite heavy around 1.5 kilograms or 3.2 pounds. The case still comes with the features as before, so there's the magnetic connectors for the PCB and daughter board, and the screwless design of the case by using these clips to hold the top and bottom case together. Alright, building the keyboard is relatively simple. Starting off with the stabilizers, I will be lubing the clip-in Neo steps. I'm using Crytox 205 Grade 0 for the housing and XHT BDZ for the wire. The housing just needs a thin layer of lube and the stabilizer wire requires a little more than that. If you plan on using the PE sheet, it should go on the PCB first before the stabilizers. One thing to take note is that the clip-in steps might be a little loose, so remember to use the plastic wedges included to lock them in place. After that, the plate foam can go on followed by the plate itself. For the switches, I'm using this Gatoron G Pro Yellow sent over by ASIO. It's a linear switch, it's reliable and most importantly, it comes lubed already. The PCB is hot swap, so you just have to push the switches into the sockets. Just be careful and make sure that you are using the right sockets on the bottom row for your preferred layout. For my build, I will be gasket mounting the PCB with the silicone gaskets. There is 6 in total that you need and they attach to the sides of the PCB like this. And once you have all of them in place, that should be the plate and PCB all done. Moving on to the case, the badge will attach magnetically to the back like this and it should just stay in place. And do remember to remove the plastic cover it comes with as well. Now it's time for the mods to go in, followed by the plate and PCB that connects magnetically too. Once everything is in place, the top case can now clip on to the bottom and the bottom feet can be installed. The keycaps are next and I'm going with one of my favorites. It's the Shenpaw Daisa PBT Cherry Profile keycaps. They are around 1.4mm in thickness and have a classic look to them with this off-white color scheme. Besides that, I think the red Cyrillic sub-legends also bring a lot of character to the keycaps. And just to make the keyboard a little bit more fun, I'll be using a Xiaolongbao keycap as the escape key. Alright, the keyboard is now done, please enjoy the typing sound test.
Here are my final thoughts on the QK65 V2 Classic. At the end of the day, it's the same budget-friendly, high-quality keyboard we have all come to know, but it ditches all of the gimmicks in favor of a more minimal keyboard. So if you prefer a more classic layout and just want a simple and easy to build keyboard, the QK65 V2 Classic might just be the one for you. As usual, everything in the video will be linked in the description below, so do check it out to find out more. And that does it for this video, thanks to QWERTY Keys for the keyboard and thank you for watching. Leave a like on the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't and remember to subscribe if you haven't. See you in the next one.